<sighs> What's up everyone? My name is YouTube Guy here. So a little while back I posted a video that you guys might have seen because it went freaking viral. And in this video I was reading some of my old poetry that I wrote in seventh grade and it was abysmally written and it was just a, a joy to read. But I shrugged. Go back to the hole I've dug. But the thing is, after I posted this video, I was pretty sad because I really liked the way it came out, thought it was funny, um, and it just was getting a crazy amount of views. So I was pretty sad that I wasn't going to be able to get to use that content again, and I would have to come up with like original ideas to try to get like something going on this channel. But luckily for me, I was browsing my Google Drive yesterday, like going way back as, as one does for nostalgia purposes. And I ended up finding another collection of poetry that I did in eighth grade. And as you can imagine, I saw this and it was just... Here comes the money! <laughs> Saddle up, baby, let's go! Yeah, so I found this other collection. Uh, the document was titled M. Lawrence Free Rights. Uh, so I'm assuming that this was kind of like a year-long thing that I was adding to. And this is like a portfolio that I did at the end of the year. It's ten poems long, so what I'm going to do is read half of them in this video and then save the other half for another video so that I can stretch it out and come up with less video ideas. Um, but yeah, I think this will be fun. Um, I actually didn't read them. I skimmed a couple, but I wanted this to be more of like a genuine reaction, just seeing like what terrible things I was writing about. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So let's go. Yeah, you know that I'll be dreaming. Okay, so the title of this collection is Life, which <laughs> right off the bat, absolutely just really genius and insightful for me in eighth grade. Um, and this first piece is called Flow. And now you might be thinking, all right, life, flow, maybe we're getting this kind of, this theme started. We're gonna talk about the trials and tribulations, you know, going back and forth. But unfortunately, I did read this one and it's about something more horrifying than you could probably even imagine. So let's get into it. Flow. My hair used to be short. It was like fresh grass after my dad finished the long hours mowing it. Ugh. It stayed that way for a long time, like the grass I mean. And I didn't really think about changing it that often. It was easy to take care of, the grass. It was a nice brown color, like an autumn leaf finally falling off the trees. But at some point, my father stopped cutting the leaf brown grass. It started to grow and flow. Now it was like a brown wave swirling around. For a while it had no shape, like a black bear sleeping. But eventually it was flowing. That's the way it stayed, the leafy brown wave swirling around my skull. Okay, so I think in order for the full effect of this to really be felt, I'm just gonna show you a picture of what I looked like at this time period with this, with this flow hair. Like, bro, I think that this piece is really just me, like, projecting and dreaming about what I could have looked like if I knew how to actually take care of my hair. Oh, God. Also, this metaphor is kind of spooky. Like, the my father stopped cutting the leaf brown grass. Like, I, I, I kind of get what I'm going for. Like, oh, then it started to grow. But it's also, like, kind of has these weird implications about, like, my parents not looking after me and stuff. It's not that bad, it's more the subject, but there are some lines that just rub me the wrong way. Like, it was like fresh grass after my dad finished the long hours mowing it. It's just a really like convoluted and, and weird kind of way to say that, so. Okay, next up, this one is called Sun in the Trees. The woods are like a second home, a home where everyone is free to live among the plants and creatures. When we're at one with nature in every way possible, Making forts and having sword fights with sticks is the most fun, and problems don't exist. <laughs> I love this line, like, making forts and having sword fights with sticks is the most fun. Like, of all things I could imagine, I'm just like, yeah, fighting with sticks is freaking sick. Staring up, we see the sun peeking through the trees, joyfully watching us as we play around in the trees and leaves. Ugh. Okay, this is, I think, just me being 14 or whatever, 13. I, I like the younger the better, I hope, because this is bad. But I say trees twice and leaves instead of leaves, and it's just like, eh. The woods become like a wonderland when the snow falls. What was already magical becomes a fantastical world, and again, we are at peace. 
it's just like this isn't as directly offensive as the other ones but it's just kind of like weird like i'm trying to get at it but it, everything feels like i wrote it within six minutes and like didn't think about it and it's like kind of bad okay so the next one is called 750 which is when my middle school started so i'm i'm gonna assume that this one's gonna be about school so hopefully there'll be something juicy in here 750 the early hours of the morning have just started i have just entered middle school all around me are the rushing bodies of students eager to finish the day ahead true my old creaker locker refuses to budge when I try to pry it open. <laughs> I literally thought that said cracker when I was opening it. I was like, whoa, this is kind of edgy. The long day is just beginning. When the locker finally bursts open, I gladly shove my giant coat and backpack inside. Basically all of this I can tell, it's just like your teachers, when, they, when you are taught poetry, it's just like, take something normal and write it like with a lot of weird lines. And th the thing is that that just sounds so like bad. When the locker finally bursts open, I gladly shove my giant coat and backpack inside. Like, I guess, but what, what, am, I, what am I saying here? I'm just saying I, I put my coat in the locker. It would have been better, I don't know. I yawn, say hey to a few kids. Psh, cool guy over here and then head across the glass bridge to advisory. All around me is the early hours of sun shining on the dew-covered grass. Spotting random teachers and peers, I call out a few vague hellos. That's when I enter through the door to advisory. Okay, so advisory is like homeroom. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's the usual crew, some on computers, some rushing to do homework, and he just talking. There are words and sentences I hear many times each day. Swag. <laughs> so that's like true, like people said swag, but what I love about the inclusion of swag is this poem is taking itself so seriously through the whole beginning. And then there's just swag in the middle. Like, <laughs> Was there an Edmodo video? Okay, so I honestly don't remember what Edmodo was. So I'm gonna hit a quick Google because I, I have no idea what I'm on the Edmodo website right now. I guess it's just like Google Classroom before Google, Google Classroom, but clearly we were we were working on Edmodo. Does anyone have the math questions? That was probably me. I challenge you to run two. All right. Now there we go. That's the good stuff right there. First of all, I spelled it run two. Like I challenge you to run as well when I meant like the sequel to the game run. But I'm gonna let it slide because Run 2 is a, is a classic, classic game. Mr. L cracks jokes about the day ahead. Mr. J brags about his swag. <laughs> what? And I grab a computer, eager to play the newest music I found. In come the, this sucks, turn that off. I don't care though, it's just a part of advisory. Okay, it's just like, kind of, Kind of sad, actually. Um, this was when I was really into EDM, and I do remember I would I would go into advisory and watch like Ultra Music Festival after movie, like at 7:50 in the morning, which I like I get it that no one wants to hear that, but this is just why did I put that in this? J and B pass around balls and punch each other. <laughs> Run two competitions are heating up. Alright, I spelled it right this time. Dr. C principal comes on the loudspeaker and says good morning in too many languages to count <laughs> i can see how this really won't be funny to like anyone that didn't go to my school but like uh, the the things i'm choosing to roast are just like super funny like my principal's just trying to be like you know inclusive and get us to learn about the world i'm just like uh. before we know it the bell has rung the day has begun off on adventure 805 <gasps> this is another one where I know, I just know that a teacher like was like, oh, a cool way to do your poems, like you end it with the beginning or something or tie, or tie it back, but it's just so bad. And like the day has begun off on adventure. The, the whole rest of it is so prosy and just so like swag that I'm very confused why I decided to do that, so. Okay, poem number four. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping for something a little more juicy. I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed with uh, the lack of kind of epic moments that have been that have been in this so far. So hopefully we get it with this one. Enemy, 
The bell of school rings. A flow of conflicting emotions sweeps me into oblivion. Oh my. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, this is already kind of juicy. Also, I, oh, the day is over. I was about to say maybe this is the end of the day. So I, I you know what? Good, mad good sequencing, 7.50, and then enemy with the end of the day. I like it. The day is over. Happy. The bus awaits. Fear. <laughs> Yo! That's kind of crazy, actually, but I'm really curious like what I'm talking about here because I I don't remember having bad experiences on the bus but the bus awaits fear sadness walking towards the yellow beast seems to take ages <laughs> this is so intense I take the steps up and assume my usual position here they come <laughs> what is going on am I getting beaten in the butt like this what is this Hunger Games situation? I take the steps up and assume my usual position. Here they come. I cringe. <laughs> if only you knew, buddy. If only you knew. Maybe today it'll be different. Maybe they were joking before. For once, change is what I crave. Oh my lord. But I am greeted with a burning fire of harassment. <laughs> This is crazy! Insults fly, staring me straight in the eye. Okay, this has to stop. I didn't mention it in the last poem, but middle school Matthew has this tendency where he'll just pick two lines out of the entire poem and just rhyme them, and it's always just so awkward and it sounds so bad, and I'm getting so mad at myself when I was 13. Okay, staring me straight in the eye. I can seal signs of sadness. You're bad at this, horrible at that. Just leave. I don't know what this is taught. Like, is this real? I don't- For all 15 minutes, I feel as if I'm in hell. Oh, God. I, I'm absolutely positive that there was a way to make this sound more intense than saying for all of 15 minutes, I feel like I'm in hell. Like, bro, okay, just, you'll be all right. Unable to change their actions, I fall like a massive barrier taken town by enemy. Another Matthew classic. You're just gonna misspell the most important word in the sentence, taken town. Unless I mean a massive barrier, like massive barrier, taken town. Which would be cool, but that's totally not what I mean. Like a massive barrier taken down by enemy fire. Oh, enemy fire. Okay, yet again, just another thing a teacher says, ooh, space it out to make space. It sounds terrible. I crumble to the ground, with a rumble, defiant, defiantly heard around the world. I mean, in eighth grade, we, we learned about the American Revolution, so that's probably why I said that. I step off the bus, finally released from hell. Come up with another word, oh my god. But I realize one more thing, what I have lost. No doubt, no more maybes. I have lost a friend. No. I have gained an enemy. All right, um, this is fascinating to me. I don't ever remember getting so epically pwned on the bus, I guess, like, maybe I, like, um, but this one was definitely the best read so far. This was a absolute roller coaster, great ending tying into the title. That, that was pretty sick. All right, next one is called Crazy Luke L, which my, my younger brother's name is Luke, so I honestly, this one, this one might be, this one might be cute. I'm, I'm actually thinking this one's gonna be wholesome. So let's see. All right, Crazy Luke L, let's, let's see. Crazy Luke L, who never backs down from competition, who is always excited to learn and discover, whose determination is admirable to all, who is always awake first, ready to play, who is my Mario Kart guide, who is smart and kind, whose small eyes are always full of excitement, who will slap a knee hockey ball faster than light, who is always smiling, is always dancing, whose kind heart is a symbol of childhood woven into our family's hearts. <laughs> this is so nice. What the? Oh, this is, uh, this is cute. Actually, I'm, honestly, I don't really mind the like little rhyming here. I feel like this is just so like wholesome and sweet that I kind of love it. Crazy Luke L, he's the youngest of the bunch who is always feeling small, whose actions make him stand tall. The rest of us look up to him, though we are really looking down. 
That's so good. The rest of us look up to him, but we're really looking down. Genius. Crazy Luke L, who will always be there for me, who is strong through days sunny or gray, who can light up a room with a giggle or a funny face. Meh. Crazy Luke L, who may not know that no matter what, I always love him, who may decide we aren't alike, whose loyalty through thick and thin stands tall, a symbol to us all, Crazy Luke L. That's the ending? Okay, let me tell you why this is bad. Who may not know that no matter what I will always love him, who may decide that we aren't alike. Okay, we're like getting to an interesting point here. I'm gonna say like, you know, maybe he might grow up, hate me, but like I'll always be there. But then whose loyalty through thick and thin stands tall? Didn't I do a whole stanza about him, his actions stand tall and his determination admirable for all? I already did this rhyme like six times. I just ran out of creative writing time. So it ends bad, but the rest was good. All right, guys, that was my next episode of poetry. There's five more poems. Um, the next one is Mickey D's. And then the one after that is called My Kingdom-ish, which like I would love to read more of these. So if you guys like this, please hit the like button. Um, and oh, also I forgot to mention, I'm doing a V-Bucks Fortnite skin giveaway. All you have to do is share this video on Twitter and type Yo, this guy looks like Dr. Doof in Schmertz. Hashtag V-Bucks. Guys, if you like the video and you tweet this video and you comment, yo, um, nice video, Dr. Doof, then you'll be entered to win the Fortnite V-Bucks Travis Scott experience skin. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, see you next time. And always remember to wash your fish. <laughs>